Narayanam Namaskritam Naram Chaivam Narotamam Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiyayat Nasta Praeshu Apadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki well, What's on the board? Can, can you say? Uh, 7 and 28. 7 and 28, okay. Um, Pariki Jataha, sufficiently anxious. Tam, unto him. Aha, said. Agadaya, deeply thoughtful. Vacha, by words. Kashmalam, impurities. Shamayan, removing. Eva, like that. The Lord saw that Brahma was very anxious about the planning and construction of different planetary systems and was depressed upon seeing the devastating water. He could understand the intention of Brahma and thus he spoke in deep thoughtful words, removing all the illusions that had arisen. Uh, <clears throat> uh, responsively. The Lord saw that Brahma was very anxious about the planning and construction of the different planetary systems and was depressed upon seeing the devastating water and was depressed upon seeing the devastating water. He could understand the intentions of Brahma and thus he spoke in deep thoughtful words removing all the illusion that had arisen. Purport. The devastating water was so fearful that even Brahma was perturbed at its appearance and became very anxious about how to situate the different planetary systems in outer space to accommodate the different kinds of different living entities, such as the human beings, those lower than human beings, and the superhuman beings, superhuman beings. All the planets in the universe are situated according to the different grades of living entities under the influence of the modes of material nature. There are three modes of material nature, and when they are mixed with one another, and they become nine, and the nine are mixed, they become 81. And the 81 also become mixed, and thus we ultimately do not know how the delusion increases and increases. Lord Brahma had to accommodate different places and situations in the requisite bodies of the conditioned souls. The task was meant only for Brahma. And no one was in the universe, and no one in the universe can even understand how difficult it was. But by the grace of the Lord, Brahma was able to execute the tremendous task so perfectly that everyone is amazed to see the workmanship of the Vidhata, or the regulator. The verse again, the Lord saw that Brahma was very anxious about the planning and construction of the different planetary systems and was depressed upon seeing the devastating water. He could understand the intentions of Brahma and thus he spoke in deep thoughtful words removing all the illusion that had arisen. So today being the appearance day of Lord Brahma, I want to talk a little about uh, Lord uh, Balaram, being the appearance of Lord Balaram. I want to talk about Lord Balaram. Um, he manifested in one, uh, uh, one uh, episode as Nityananda. And uh, when this is, uh, is, is narrated in the in Vrindavan Thakur's Chaitanya Bhagavat, when Nityananda was, was uh, preaching, he was wearing very, uh, very important jewels like diamonds and pearls and gold. And uh, a, a group of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, criminals, dacoits they're called in India sometimes, uh, decided to, uh, to raid the house and steal his jewelry. And they had a, 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 different, uh, a different approach. Some said that I'll take the gold. Another one said I'll take all the pearls. Another one said I'll take all the diamonds. So they sent spies in to see what was going on. And there was a, a, a whole uh, a mob of these dacoits. And uh, this is described in Chaitanya Bhagavat. And the, 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 the first night, they, somehow or other, um, by Krishna's arrangement, they, they fell asleep. And when they awoke, it was, it was daytime. The sun had arisen. And so they thought, well, we'll come back a later time. Maybe they were, uh, they were criticizing one another. How, how it was that we fell asleep and so on and so forth. So they decided to come back. And the second time they came back, the house was surrounded by 
uh, guards, big uh, burly uh, uh, guards. Each one was capable of killing 10,000 men. And they decided that there was no way that they could uh, uh, go into the house and get past these guards because the guards were very, very, uh, very powerful. And somehow or other, because the, they also had worship uh, a goddess, they thought that, the, 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 that the, it, wasn't, it wasn't appropriate for them to go in because they couldn't uh, possibly get past these guards. So they decided to come back at another time. And they, after they, they waited about a week or 10 days, they came back. And this time they, they decided to go in and, 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 and rob the, the uh, Avaduta, as, as Balaram was, or Nityananda was known as Balaram, um, and, and take the jewels. So, uh, but what, what had happened by Krishna's arrangement is that they lost their eyesight. They all became blind. And there was a, a, a moat surrounding the, the uh, house and it was full of, of very, uh, very virulent bugs and mosquitoes and, and, uh, and they were scratched and bitten and, and they decided that it was impossible. And the leader of the Dacoids decided that the whole thing was just, just a, not, a, not a very, a very uh, uh, a good idea to go in and, 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 and uh, and rob them. So the leader of the Dacoits went in alone and spoke with Nityananda and he said that he apologized. He was very sorry that they were uh, coming to, to uh, steal things and, and uh, he said that actually I, I want to, to uh, purify myself. So Nityananda took mercy upon him and, uh, and uh, he actually uh, became very uh, devoted and, and, very, uh, and very submissive. And even though he was a, a criminal or a dacoit, he, uh, he manifested spiritual qualities and, uh, and all these spiritual qualities manifested and Nityananda was aware of them and he forgave him for all of his sinful activities and uh, he became a devotee, a great devotee. So uh, that happened. That was an incident that took place and it's narrated by Vrindavan Das Thakur in Chanchanya Bhagavat. And for those of you who don't know much about Balaram, I'm going to talk a little about Balaram. Uh, who he is, and these are some general uh, um, notes. First of all, he's the first expansion of the planetary manifestations of Krishna in the, the Chatra Buha. And he's the son of Rohini and Vasudev, and Krishna's older brother. And I don't know if you've noticed in, in the Ratha Yatra festival when there's three cars, he's in the first car because he's the older brother, and Krishna's in the second car because he's the younger, uh, he's the younger brother. He's, he's a back further, not in the second or the third car. Um, so sometimes he's called Nityananda Ram and uh, his name means all the pleasure giving one. His other name is, is Baladev and he's sometimes called Haladar. Haladar means the bear of the, the, uh, of the, of, of the uh, club or the, or the, or the, um, some, uh, the controlling rod for the, for the uh, uh, cows. And then there's an instance, in, it's, it's described in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto where he was uh, gi given, a, he gave an order to, to um, uh, Ganga of, of the river and, and she disobeyed him. So he decided to punish her and by punishing her, he was uh, trying to drag the, the entire city of Hasanapur into the water. And, and it, was, it was such a, a uh, devastating, like an earthquake situation that's described in the, in the Srimad Bhagavatam that the that the, the city of Hasanapur was like a raft on the sea. It was wobbling and, and everyone was extremely frightened. And then uh, Ganga came forth and, and uh, begged forgiveness. That's uh, what she did. And, and because she begged forgiveness, Balaram forgave her. Um, and during the, during the Kurukshetra War, um, Balaram was not there because he was away on pilgrimage. And uh, he was, he had t uh, t told Duryodhana and, and Bhima not to fight because they were, because they were equally uh, skilled at, at club fighting and uh, and uh, it, it, they went on for 27 days and it was kind of like a tie the, the, uh, the, the one didn't conquer the other and then uh, the, the, there was a fight with uh, uh, Jarasandha with Bhima and Jarasandha had 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 imprisoned and and uh, several thousands of, of kings and. Uh, and he was very powerful. But Lord Chaitanya uh, and Lord Krishna gave him the, the, uh, the method by which Jarasandha could be killed after 27 days of fighting. And, and he narrated the story about how when Jarasandha was born, he was born in two halves. 
from from the uh, the the, uh, the growing up to the top of the head. And uh, there was a, 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 a female demon or demoness called Jara who, who uh, saw these two parts and put them together. And, and so somehow or other, the Jara Sanda became a, a, a demon, in, in, uh, a whole demon. So uh, uh, um, Krishna gave, gave uh, Bhima a, a hint of how to, to win the, the, the duel. He said, if you, if you, he narrated the story about how Jarasandha was in two parts and that, he, that his weakness was in, 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 the, in the middle between the, the uh, up to, from the groin to the head, to the top of the head. He was very, that's where he was joined. And so uh, uh, Bhima, following the instruction of, of Krishna, put one uh, foot on, 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 on Jarasandha's other foot and, and, uh, and with, the other, with, the other two, with his two hands, he grabbed the, his other leg and pulled him apart and, and, and killed him mercilessly from, from the, the genitals up to the top of the head. It was in two parts. And, and when, and, and when Jarasandha's wife saw this, they, they all began to lament very, very severely because, because that was the end of the battle, of the, of the duel. Um, so the, the Krishna Balaram temple is named after Krishna uh, uh, Balaram's name is there. And, um, so that, that happened. And he was at Prabhas when the Yadra dynasty destroyed itself. Uh, he was there. And the name Balaram also is, refers to the name Rama, Ramachandra, and, and Hari Krishna, uh, Hari Rama. Because he is the Krishna's first expansion, he's Vishnu Tattva and, uh, and, and is considered God. He's considered equal to Krishna, and although he has a white complexion, and he's on our altar, with, with, and he's, he's considered to be the, the elder brother. And, and he was removed from the, uh, this is something that, that scientists can't understand. He was taken from the womb of Devaki to the womb of, Rohiti, of, of Rohini, and he was born as the son of Rohini. Um, so, and, and this is a lecture that Prabhupada gave in 1977 in, uh, in, in uh, Vrindavan uh, on, on Balaram. Actually, it was in, in uh, Bhuvaneshwar in, uh, in, 19, in February, 20, uh, February 2nd of 1977, this lecture was given. And I'm, I'm going to read what he said. This has been transcribed. Uh, 1977, February 26th. February 2nd, 1977. Prabhupada says, today is the appearance day of Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu is Baladev. Baladev Tattva Narottam Das Thakur has sung, Rajendrananda Yei, Sachi Sutta Haile. He who is formerly the son of Nandu Maharaj has appeared as the son of Sachi Devi. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mother's name is Sachi Devi. So Krishna is Sri Chanya Mahaprabhu and Balaram is Nityananda Prabhu. In the Vedic literature, it is said, Nayam Atma Bala Hinena. One cannot understand the absolute truth without Bala. Bala means strength. Sometimes rascal philosophers say that Bala means bodily strength. They propagate the philosophy that unless you are bodily stout and strong, you cannot achieve spiritual salvation. You must be very strong and stout and eat meat and fight, and then you'll get spiritual birth in your next life. No, the strength, bala, required to understand the absolute truth is different. This is spiritual strength. The difficulty of, this, of the present situation is that although we are moving on account of spiritual strength, people have no information about spiritual strength. They are thinking of material strength. That is expressed by Narottam Das Thakur's song, Hankare Matahoya Nitai Padapapna Pashariya. The misconception of thinking that Bala means bodily strength is due to a hunkara, false ego. By the spell of Maya, people are thinking, we are independent, we can do whatever we like. This is called a hunkara vimudhatma. Under the present pretext, false prestige, everyone is thinking, we are independent. We can find a solution of the problems of life by material adjustment. So that is the material disease, a hunkara vimudhatma. Bewildered people do not understand that the real strength is spiritual strength. We see daily that a person may be very strong, very powerful, and have a good brain, be a very good scientist, but what is the person's real strength? 
The strength is Atma. As soon as the Atma, or the soul, goes out of the body, the intelligence, the strength, so many things, they are nothing. On spiritual strength, the body moves. Suppose you have a very good car, Mercedes or Rolls Royce. When there is no petrol, how will the car move? It is not possible. There is a kind of spirit required, petrol spirit. Petrol spirit of, 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 of similarly, real strength and is spiritual strength. That spiritual strength is Balaram. Therefore, we have to take shelter of the lotus feet of Balaram. Balaram means Guru Tattva. Balaram represents Guru. If we want to understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if we want to understand Krishna, then we must take shelter of Balaram. Nayam Atma Bala Hinena Labhya. The Vedic injunction means, without the mercy of Balaram, you cannot realize your spiritual identity. Balaram comes as Nityananda Prabhu. Therefore, we must take shelter of Nityananda. This song by Naratam Das Thakur begins, Nitai Padakamala, Koti Chandra Sushitala. The lotus feet of Nityananda are as cooling as millions of moons. If we take shelter of Nityananda Prabhu, we'll get peace. For example, in daytime, especially in the summer, we become exhausted by the heat. But in the evening, as soon as there is moonshine, we become satisfied. All the days, labor, and fatigue are immediately removed. One moon gives us so much pleasure. And the shade of Nityananda Prabhu's lotus feet is as pleasing as the moonshine. It is as pleasing as the moonshine, as, as the moonshine of millions of moons. If we actually want peace of mind, if we actually want to be free from material fatigue, we must take shelter of Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu is strength, spiritual strength. And without spiritual strength, you cannot understand, you cannot approach or understand Krishna. Nayam Atma Pravachena Labhya. If you are a good speaker, that does not mean you'll understand Krishna. Na Medasa. Neither by a good brain. Because you have a very good brain, you'll understand Krishna. No. Na Bahuna Shrutena. You think that, be, uh, that because you are a very good scholar, a university degree holder, you can understand Krishna. No, that is not possible. We have spiritual strength, the source of spiritual strength of Bala, Balaram. Krishna's first manifestation, Prakasha Vigraha. Krishna is, is manifesting himself through Balaram. So we have to take shelter of Nityananda Prabhu. Jai Chayaya Jagata Juraye. The whole world is suffering. But if you want peace, take shelter of Nityananda Prabhu. He no nitai bina bai, Radha Krishna paite nai. Our real uh, aim of life is how to go back home, back to Godhead, and associate with Radha Krishna. In another song it is sung, Manushya Janma Baya, Radha Krishna Na Bajaya. Uh, unless you come to Radha Krishna, you cannot get real pleasure. If you want to dance and get real pleasure, don't dance independently. Dance with Krishna. Just like here in our temple, we are also eating, but we are eating the remnants of food left by Krishna. That is real pleasure. It is not that we stop eating. We are not dry philosophers. All over the world, we are eating Krishna prasadam. At least 10,000 men and women are taking Krishna prasadam, but we have no anxiety. We have no anxiety. A family consists of a few members. They are full of anxiety about how to maintain the family. We are maintaining a family of 10,000 and we have no anxiety. Just see practically, we have no anxiety. We require thousands and thousands of rupees for maintaining in Europe, America, and costly. it is a costly affair. But because we are under the shelter of Nityananda Prabhu, Balaram, we have no anxiety. Material life means anxiety. You cannot avoid anxiety if you lead a material life. That is Prahlad Maharaja's instruction. He was asked by his father, my dear son, what is the best thing you have learned? Of course, some of you have heard all these uh, incidents before, and maybe you have uh, read Srimad Bhagavatam. Maybe you uh, have forgotten some of these pastimes. So uh, this is by way of a reminder, this uh, speech by Srila Prabhupada. It was uh, given as a lecture about 
six months before he departed. So it was, it was in the latter part of his life and therefore it's considered very, very important. My dear son, Pranyakashipu said, what is the best thing you have learned from your teachers? He replied, my dear best of the Asuras, the whole human society is suffering at least from one disease, anxiety. Ask anybody, take a small ant and take a big elephant. Take the president of the United States or take a street beggar. Ask them, are you free from anxiety? Nobody will say yes. They will say, I am full of anxiety. That's a fact. Why are they full of anxiety? Prahlad Maharaj has replied, Sada Samud Vigna Diyam. They are unhappy because they have accepted Asad Vastu, that which will not exist. Everything, <clears throat> whatever we have will not exist. Our body will not exist. And this is the main platform of our present existence. In the material world, you exist only as long as the body is there. So Prahlad Maharaj said, the real solution to the problems of life is to get out of material con this material condition. That is the best thing, in my opinion. A Vedic injunction says, asato ma sadgamaha. Don't live in this asat, this material condition. Sadgamaha, go to real existence. Real existence means spiritual life. If we actually want life, blissful life, we must get out of material existence. That is Prahlad Maharaja's instruction. Samudvigna diyam. If you remain in material existence, you must suffer some anxiety. You will be exempt. So Prahlad Maharaj advises, Hidvatma patam griham andakupam vanam gato yad dharam ashrayeta. The real problem is anxiety. And anxiety will continue as long as you are in a material existence. Therefore, real life is to get out of material existence. Atma patam means killing the soul. Material civilization is killing the soul. People have no information of the soul. They do not know how to become peaceful, how to become blissful. They are trying to be peaceful through the external material energy. They are thinking that by constructing big, big buildings, they will be peaceful. Here in Bhubaneswar, they are doing this. Uh, they are building big roads and traveling with motor cars. And they are thinking that this is advancement of civilization. No, it is not advancement of civilization. It, in, it is increasing their anxiety. There is no solution to the anxiety. Formerly, there was no anxiety. The university was in the cottage. Vyasadeva was writing the Srimad Bhagavatam and all the Puranas in a cottage. That was the university. Who can produce such literature, that which Vyasadeva has given? From any angle of vision, from the literary point of view, from the philosophical point of view, everything that he has written is perfect. The Mahabharata, the Puranas, the Vedanta Sutra. There was no need of universities. His writing required a clear brain, and that was achieved through Brahminical qualities. Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty and knowledge, wisdom and, and religiousness. Uh, where is the education today to teach these qualities? Technical education. How can you very nicely hammer? Will not, uh, this, this will not solve the problems of life. If we want the real solution to the problems of life, our first duty is to take shelter of Lord Nityananda Prabhu's lotus feet. Then we'll be happy. Then we'll be soothed by the moon rays emanating from his lotus feet. And all our fatigue will subside. Say sambandha nahi ja. Um, if you t have no connection with Nityananda Prabhu, you'll simply be wasting time. So, Pashu Boro Durachar. Here's Nero Tamdas Sakurs, has used a very strong word here. Anyone who has no connection with Nityananda Prabhu is a Pashu. Pashu means animal. How can any animal get happiness? That is not possible. From childhood, the dog searches after food. The street dog cannot get food unless a dog has a master is always unhappy. Everyone has a dog. Everyone is searching after the master to serve, but no one is satisfied because such a master, it's false master. When you take a real master, Nityananda Prabhu, you'll be happy. Bhakti Vinod Thakur has sung, Vaishnava Thakura Tomara Kukura Baliya. My dear Vaishnava Thakur, kindly accept me as your dog. I am a dog already, but I am Maya's dog. I am not a Vaishnava's dog. 
So kindly accept me. If we do not become a dog of Nityananda Prabhu or Vaishnava or a guru, there is no question of happiness. Nitai na bolia muke majila. One who has no connection with Nityananda Prabhu and who does not say Jaya Nitai Jaya Gora becomes absorbed in material uh, enjoyment. Majilo samsara dzuke means to think society, friendship and love divinely bestowed upon man. Materialist persons, materialistic persons say like that. In samsara material existence of repeated birth and death, there cannot be sukha, happiness. But the materialist is attracted by material existence. Vidya kule kikoribe ta. What help will a university education or birth in a big family be? These will not help. Why are we accepting these false solutions? Ahankara mata hoya nitai para pasarayiya. Misled by false productions, misled by false prestige and false uh, ego, we are getting the body which will not exist. We have taken the body as reality. But if we take shelter of Nityananda Prabhu, we'll get enlightenment. Nitayer Koruna Habe. Therefore, Naratam Das advised you want the association of Radha Krishna, you must first achieve the mercy of Nityananda, Lord Nityananda, Lord Balaram. Today is Nityananda's Prabhu's Nityanar Charana Satya. The reality is Nityananda Charana. So they are all rascals. They are proud of their education, their universities. This is going on. Nitai Pada Sada Koro. Therefore, we should always desire to be under the shelter of Nityananda's lotus feet. Naratam is very unhappy, Naratam, the sings. Naratam means the best of human beings. Here in the material world, one may be the best of human beings uh, in a very exalted position, but everyone is dukkhi, unhappy. Rako Ranga Charanapasa. So we should always pray to Nityananda Prabhu and Balaram Prabhu. Kindly keep me under your shelter. I am very unhappy. Under the shelter of your lotus feet, I shall be happy. That is real happiness. Thank you very much. So, uh, any, any uh, comments or questions to take about Balaram's appearance day? This is a very special day, Balaram's appearance day. Any comments or questions? So we'll, okay, yes, Ram? Do you have any recollections, Maharaj, from maybe Balaram's appearance day in the past? It was always a very special day. That was my only recollection. Very, uh, very beautifully decorated, like uh, Ruti has done today, and uh, and everyone was 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 uh, very uh, very attentive to what Prabhupada was saying on that day, and Balaram's appearance day. So that's the the, the uh, most I, most of the recollection that I have. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll stop there. Hare Krishna. Krishna Balaram Ki Jai Haribo Balaram Ki Jai